Hi everyone, this is Ellie May with Swift Creek Customs and my voice is still not 100% but I'm tired of waiting. So we are going to do this and I'm going to hope that you can understand me with the microphones. This is going to be a step-by-step -step video on how to set up a kiss cut setting and a die cut setting with stickers. So what I mean by that is a kiss cut only cuts through the top layer of your paper or your material and then a die cut cuts around the entire sheet fully and cuts it completely out. So as you can see here I've been testing this and I have it's really simple so I want to share that with you but I have a few things to get started first. The first thing is sticker papers vary greatly so you need to test cut, test cut, test cut. Get with your Caesar Juliet or your Romeo. It works the same on both machines. Test cut your materials first. So no matter what paper you're using, I would recommend that you start by test cutting and getting the settings for both a kiss cut and a die cut. Now, I will share my settings for the sticker papers that I have tested and I'll add to that as I test more um, in the description below. However, my settings may not work for you and that is because of the way the machine is designed so if the machine if your blade depth is deeper or out farther than mine my force isn't going to work for you so each user really needs to test cut the settings on their own for the materials that they're using for instance i had three different kinds of sticker paper here even as an experienced user i told myself to test cut these two sticker papers cut out great this one I did not test cut and that's why I'm telling you to and it didn't actually cut through all the way. It didn't even do the kiss cut properly. So I need to test cut for this particular brand of sticker paper. All across the world your sticker paper and your materials are going to vary. So test cuts are very important and if your machine does not cut through your material properly it's not the machine's fault. You need to test cut. And if your material is thicker, for instance, if you are using a laminate overlay on top of your stickers, that is going to affect your, your cut settings greatly. So you really need to test cut for the products that you're using and for your particular machine and your blade setting. So while I'll share my settings, they may not work for you. The other thing I've seen asked is if the same settings for another brand of cutting machine will work for the Caesar Juliet. No each machine and each model is different so you might get lucky if you were to try that but the force setting for instance on a cameo is different than the force setting on this machine they go up to different levels they just work differently so you really need to test cut for your particular materials and for your machine the other thing i want to mention here is that when you are cutting through any material completely through the material when we're doing this die cutting, for instance, you need to use a cutting mat. The cutting mat is what protects your machine from damage. If you cut through a material without the cutting mat, then you run the risk of damaging your machine and the cutting strip that runs under the blade housing. If your cutting strip gets damaged, that could lead to future cut issues and things not working properly. So I want to make sure you do that. So we are using a Caesar cutting mat today. Now, Let's get started. It's really not difficult. It's very simple. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you the full process of setting up the print and cut, showing the cut on the Caesar Juliet. It will work the same on Romeo as well. And then I'm also going to show at the end of the video um, a couple ways on different files that you're opening for print and cut and how they might act differently. So in the description of this video below, you will find chapters and you can jump to that if you want. I recommend watching the entire video first so you get the whole process and then you can jump as needed to a certain section. So let's head over to the Leonardo Design Studio software and get started with the setup of our print and cut. Okay, we are over in the Leonardo Design Studio software. The first thing I wanna mention is that I am using a version of 1.1.5. That is the current version as of the time of this video. If there are updates to this particular method of print and cut 
with the kiss cut and die cut. I will put those updates in the description below on this video. So check that out depending on what date you're watching the video. It is the way you can do this as of right now, today's date. If the terminology changes, I'll also add that into the description as well. So check that out for more details, as well as I will link the supplies that I've used and the designs that I'm using. I'm using some free files, so you should be able to still get those if they're available on the site. So I will link all that in the description below. The first thing that I wanna start with is I'm gonna set up my print and cut page. So I'm gonna come over here and I'm gonna choose print and cut job that's going to change my page size and I want to select the page size that is what I'm currently printing on. So for me, that is US letter. If you need to change your page size to something else, I'll link in the description uh, below on how you can change your paper size if your paper doesn't show up in this drop-down box. So for me, I'm choosing letter. And then I'm gonna come up here. I'm gonna turn on the page marks for the full page. And the next thing I wanna do is I'm going to open up my file. And again, I mentioned, I'm gonna go through the entire process step-by-step, step, and then at the very end of the video, I'm gonna show you a couple differences with different file types and how you can work with those, because I did find some differences. So I'm gonna come up here to file, and now in this version and going forward, you can use file open, and it will pull in other file types. So then I just need to find that file. So I'm going to find those designs on my computer, So what the first one I'm gonna be working with today is this, it's called 60 Cartoon Bundle. It is a bundle on design bundles. It's linked in the description below. And it just has a bunch of different cartoon characters. So I thought it would be fun to use. It is a free file currently on design bundles as I'm recording this. And I'm just gonna choose this setting right here. And the one I'm gonna choose is actually, it's labeled for Cricut, but it will work for us. What we're looking for is we are looking for the PNG file. So if I move my mouse over it, it's gonna tell me it's a PNG file. I'm gonna click on that. I'm gonna choose open. And then I'm going to select how I want it to open this file. So I'm gonna be doing a print and cut, and I want to set up a cut setting around each of the individual stickers. So I'm gonna choose print and cut, choose next. And then it's going to give me my trace options. And I just usually just click next throughout everything, unless at the end I run into a problem and then I can go back and troubleshoot that. So I'm gonna come up here to finished. It's going to add those to my mat. What you might notice is that in the current versions of the software, PNG files don't really open at the original size. That's okay. In this case, it doesn't make any difference. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to increase the size of those however I want. And I've already created a cut line around that. So what I want to do is I'm actually going to open up another file as well and add it to this. So I'm gonna choose open, come back up here to my cart, cartoon bundle, and I'm gonna select another one. Go through the same steps. And it's just really dependent on what files. Some files have individual stickers and you open those each individually. Some are set up as a full sticker sheet. So I'm going to select those and then I'm just going to kind of enlarge those. So this is all going to be dependent on the files that you are working with. But, you know, for this demo, if the if the file is still free, it's a great way to practice and follow along with what I'm doing. So now that I have my kiss cut, it has individual cut lines. I could check that if I come up here to, to send design, click send, it's going to show those cutting contours around each individual sticker. So I can come back to design. And what I wanna do is I wanna draw a box. So I'm gonna draw a rectangle around, and we're just gonna do two. Obviously you can do whatever you would like to. The last color I used was white. So I'm gonna come over here and I'm just gonna change this to black so you can see it. And then what I wanna do is I'm gonna change this to stroke so I can see through that box. Now here's where the settings come in. So I have my box selected that I've just drawn. I'm going to come over here to the default where it says default print, and I'm going to choose full cut. And then what I want to do is I want to select, when I move my mouse over it, it's going to put a green outline around those stickers. 
I want to select the stickers and I want to tell this it's already defaulted to cut tool and that is exactly what I want. So I want it set as the cut tool. And then I can come down here and I can verify that that's the same. And what I'm going to do is I'm actually just going to, since I already set this up with the cut through, the die cut, I'm going to control C, control V, make a copy, and I'm going to bring it down here. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to adjust this a little bit because of my file, just so they don't overlap. And it doesn't have to be perfect. This is just for the practice and the setup of it. Now I can click on this rectangle on the bottom that I made a copy of, and you can see here it shows as a full cut. The other thing you can do is you can select the layers panel under the properties and you can verify what the settings are currently. So here it shows as blue, it's going to be the cut tool and then it shows up in the bottom of this panel as well. So you can kind of see what those settings are as you go through. So if I were to select this as my square, it shows here, should show as a full cut. The layers panel still has a few bugs in it that I've reported, but you can verify too that it shows up here correctly as well. And then what we wanna do is we're ready to send this design. So if I click on send, top right corner, I don't have any options because this is a print and cut, so you have to keep everything the same. So when you're working with a print and cut, every single detail matters. Your page size has to match the actual page size that you're printing on. Your registration marks need to print on the page exactly where it shows on the screen. So if your printer is not printing in the proper locations, that will affect it. So there are no options for you to select here in this menu. Everything is grayed out. And then what you can see here is in the top left, I have my printable page. And then in the bottom left corner is my cutting contours. And you can see that I have two different selections. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna set this up first. Now you are going to need to take those test cut settings that you did for your sticker paper to enter into this setup. So if I come over here on the right hand side, I have some options. Your blade tool, if you are using a Caesar blade in your machine, you can leave it as the Caesar standard blade. There are a couple other options. Your pen is for your drawing. And then custom blade setting is if you're using a third party um, blade inside of your housing. Some do fit in there, so there is a difference there in how it might cut. And I'm not gonna get into that today in the video. But I'm using a Caesar standard blade, so that's the setting I need. And then you're gonna come here and we have our settings. So you have cutting tool. So our cutting tool was our kiss cut. So select that and my settings that I tested were a force of seven and the speed of 10. I can increase that to a 13 for my sticker paper. Again, according to your sticker paper, it's going to make a difference. And then I can select this cutting tool drop down again I'm gonna come down here to full cut and I am using a force of 30 and a speed of 13. So now I have my settings all set up. What I'm gonna do now is I'm going to, I need to print. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to select the print artwork. You wanna make sure that your printer paper size is selected here. I find when I first open the software that it may not show that my current printer's page size is there. So I just have to select that. I've had my software open for a while now, so it automatically shows. And then what I wanna do is I wanna choose send to printer. And your, depending on your printer, all printers are going to vary. Mine has some weird thing with Windows, <clears throat> excuse me. Mine has some weird thing with Windows 11 and shows a weird funky menu now. Um, I haven't had time to troubleshoot that, but I'm just gonna choose, I wanna make sure to, I'm printing through my rear feed tray. Um, you'll have to test with your printer on what works best for you. So I need to choose my rear tray for this. Click okay, and then I can go ahead and print. <laughs> And my printer will show up all the little things. It says I'm low on ink. It's okay for this print. I usually run my ink as far as I can. 
so I can hear my printer in the background. It's done. So then this window should disappear. I'm just gonna close that. And then I am ready to send this to cut. So I can click here on my cutting contours. I'm gonna grab my printed page. Hang on one second. So I have my printed page and I'm going to go set this up on the Juliet. Okay, so now I have my printed page. I'm gonna wake Juliet up here, the touch screen. I am going to place this onto my Caesar cutting mat. Make sure your ink is dry so you don't smear your registration marks or your print. And then I'm going to place it in my machine and I am going to lock it in place and then I'm going to adjust my housing. Now print and cut is very, very specific in where the housing starts. So your camera is located, I'll move this out here. The camera is located underneath this white box here. So if I just put that back to home position, I'm going to move my mat the correct location, correct direction. And then what I want is I want to move my blade. I want my blade you're moving it into where this arrow points. You're moving it into that registration mark that the arrow points to. So I'm moving the tip of the blade inside that mark. You have to move the position with the blade position properly in order for the camera to pick up correctly. Now, this is going to be very, very fast. So what I wanna say first off is I wanna point out some things. I'm not sure this will come through on the screen, but if it doesn't, I will show some still shots of what I am going to show you. You can watch as this works and watch where that camera is picking up to make sure that it's picking up in the correct location. It can be quite quick, so you want to make sure that you are checking that. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to send this job to Juliet. So let's go back to the software real quick. Now I've got Juliet all set up for the print and cut. You wanna verify that your settings are correct with your test cut for your force and your speed for your particular material. You wanna make sure that both of them have changed to what you wanted them to be. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm going to click on send to cutter and we're gonna pop back over to Juliet and watch her register. So click send a cutter. It's gonna ask me if those settings are correct. You can double check that you, you have it correct. And then we're gonna go back to Juliet. Okay, so what you'll notice is that the camera is gonna show a photo here. There is a red crosshairs and the red crosshairs should pick up on the corner of each registration mark. This is why the placement of the blade housing is so important inside this bottom left registration mark. That is how it connects and it looks for those marks. So if you haven't set it up properly, it is most likely not going to cut properly. The other thing to note, boy, she's fast. The other thing to note is that if your machine beeps at you, you need to stop and start over. That means something is wrong. It can't pick up the registration mark correctly. What I'm finding most times is that it means that the housing was not positioned in the correct location or it can't see that mark for some reason. Like it didn't print or um, just really varies each, uh, by case, case by case. Now, it's going to perform that kiss cut first, which is what you want it to do and then it performs the die cut. It's very important that it does the kiss cut first, so then with that die cut, it doesn't move the material. So if your mat was not sticky and you cut completely through the material first, it could shift before it gets that kiss cut and the accuracy would be affected. So I'm going to come over here, get that down, and then what I'm gonna do is, there is my, kiss, uh, my die cut. And here is my kiss cut. Again, you need to test your cut settings for your blade 
and for your sticker paper. As your blade dulls, you may find that you need to increase the force. And if you're using thicker materials, your kiss cut settings are going to be much deeper than what mine are for this paper. Now, it's not really that hard. You saw how simple it was to set those cut settings. The biggest thing for your success is going to be your test cuts for your different types of material. So I tested three different types of sticker paper. This was a paper that I probably wouldn't recommend unless you're just testing, it's great for testing. But there are a couple things I wanna mention about different sticker papers. So the first thing I wanna mention is, um, I'll do a still shot of this so you can see it, but your quality. So like I mentioned, this is a sticker paper that I was testing with another cutting machine and a, a different, um, I was using the Silhouette Auto Sheet Feeder. So I was trying to test as many products as I could. So I had it in my stash, couldn't send it back because I'd already opened it. So I thought, what a better way to do this but I did notice a print quality. So it's not necessarily your um, software that is the issue with printing, but your different types of paper can absorb that ink differently. So I did see a difference between the um, quality in the colors, even though my printer is low on ink, um, it was low on ink for all of these in one particular color. So it's still a good baseline to, um, you know, give me an idea. So these are two different types and I'll put a still shot up here of the quality. But the Staples brand actually, and this is the one I've used for years, uh, Staples brand printed the best colors, in my opinion, from my printer. However, I didn't test cut, you know, I got going real quick. I didn't test cut with this particular sticker paper that I, it was the third type I used. So those settings did not work. So it didn't even get the die cut or the kiss cut. Now, what I'm gonna do is I am going to send this back through and see how Juliet does trying to send it on a second pass. Since it has registration marks, it might work, it might not. But that is what is all about, testing. Testing, testing, testing. So. The next thing that I want to share with you is I'm going, I mentioned in the beginning that I wanted to show you a couple different file types. So when I was testing all of these and the files, I found that there is a difference in how the files come into Leonardo Design Studio, depending on how the file was created or what file type you are using. So I do want to jump over back into Leonardo Design Studio and I'm going to give you a couple more examples. Now that I'm done with this file, I'm gonna go back to my design tab. You wanna save your file if you want to, or by chance, want to come back to it. Um, the other thing you could do is you could save this as, let's save this as a template file. Um, so I've already saved it from my pre previous projects, so that's not a big deal, but I can set this as my template file and then come in here and I could just delete those bits of it and I could start over with a new graphic, which is exactly what I'm gonna do. That light bulb just came on. Um, normally I just start over on a new design mat, but since you've already set up these boxes with your die cut setting, you might as well just continue with that with a template file. So if this is a template file, I'm going to choose save. And then what I wanna do is I actually wanna save as, so then I can rename this. So I'm going to be using, as my demonstration, I'm going to be using a sticker file that comes in as an SVG. Um, the reason I want to show you this is because each file, de it depends on how the designer created it. And in particular, this is another free file on design bundles, but I found an issue with it that I had to work around. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come up here to file, open, and I'm going to find this file on my computer. So this file is from Design Bundles called Uplifting Stickers. I'm gonna click on that, click on it to open, and I have a couple file types here. Now, I want to point out the reason that this shows. So I'm gonna open, let's open the JPEG. Um, actually, I'm opening in LDS. Um, if I open the JPEG, I'll be able to show you what why I'm doing this. So I'm gonna open this JPEG. Um, I'm not going to continue with this, but each of these stickers has a white border around it. But this particular sticker here 
is overlapping. It's too close together. So if I continue with this as the JPEG for the print and cut file, those two stickers are gonna cut out together. It's not gonna work properly. So I'm gonna click cancel here. And in this case, the designer provided an SVG file. So mine currently shows the, um, if I double clicked on this outside the software, it would open in Silhouette Studio, but it's the SVG if I just move my mouse over top of that. So I'm gonna open this SVG in Leonardo Design Studio. When I do, what I'm showing here is this is very, very close together. And the reason I have to work with this, if I choose print and cut, I won't be able to separate those. They won't be individual stickers. So in this case, I need to choose editable artwork. So I'm gonna click on apply. And then you can see here, I have my artwork. Now, what I'll move it over here so you can see it. So here, I have these overlapping. And so if I did it as a print and cut and it traced it, it's going to trace those two stickers together. That's not what I wanted. So I needed to open the SVG file in this case, and if I right click on it, I can choose ungroup, and you'll notice here I still had my layers panel open. It placed all of those different stickers into their individual pieces. So if I click off of here, now I can work with these stickers individually. So I'm just going to choose a couple, and this is just gonna be a demonstration for the file. I'm not actually going to go through the full steps of print since we already did that. So I'll just choose a couple of these and I'll move the rest off my mat. So if I were to click on the send tab here, because I opened it as the SVG, if I click send, there we have our print, but we don't have any cut lines around our individual stickers because we did not, when it opened that SVG, it didn't open it as the, it didn't trace it as it opened it. So I need to create those. So I'm gonna come back here to the design, going to click on this, and you can do all of these as one. If, if I select, hold my shift key down and select all of them, I could build the contours, which means I'm going to trace around them all as one but then all of your contours are as one layer. And so working with this, I discovered that's not what I wanted. If I wanted to be able to move a sticker individually, I want each one to be separate. So in this case, I'm gonna choose one, build contours, and now I'm, I can do this print and cut. So I'm gonna come to apply, and it's going to build that contour. So if I come up here to send design, I can double check and you can see here that it's built that contour, the kiss cut, what I'm working for around that. So if I come back to design, now uh, you wanna make sure to change this to the setting that you want for your kiss cut. So select that object, choose default, and you're going to choose the cut tool because that is going to be our kiss cut setting. So then I'm going to do that for each of those. So apply, choose my cut tool, and I, I'm gonna show you here what I mean by it if you select all of them at the same time, and I choose build contours, then I click apply, and now they all work as one. Um, I can try to ungroup them, but I don't think that worked before. Yeah, see. So if you have individual stickers and you want them to be individual, I'm just gonna hit the undo button here, Go back, now they're, they're back to the individual, and I'm gonna choose Build Contour. So click Apply, change my setting here to the Cut Tool, Build Contour, Apply. And in the beginning, it may feel like this is a lot of steps for individual stickers, but it's actually this particular file, the way it was created, so I wanted to share that with you. And you get the hang of it. Once you start doing this, you'll start recognizing it. And the more you do it, the better you're gonna get at it. You're gonna start doing this without even a second thought. So now if I come up here to send design, I have my print page and I have my cut contours page. So then I can set this up. So the cut contours is going to be my cutting tool. That's my kiss cut setting. 
and the full cut, which is my black line, is going to be my die cut setting. So you can work with that. You can create your own templates for the shapes you want. Um, it really just depends on what's going to work for you. So I'm gonna come back here to the design and I wanna show you um, another file. Again, each of these files, you're going to experience something different because they're all created by different people and they may have different setups. For instance, this one, the stickers were too close together and so we had to work around that. Luckily, there was an SVG file that we could work with. Okay, so I'm just gonna close this. I don't need to save it. I, I suppose I could save it. I probably will delete it later. But I am going to set up a new file. So I'm going to come up here to open and I'm going to choose my file. Okay, for this next one, it's gonna be Design Bundles Printable Planner Sticker. So I wanted to show one that comes in. So you have, there's two different file types, two different page designs in this particular file. So I'm just going to choose one of them and show you. So this is a full page of uh, stickers. If I open it as the print and cut, it's going to place it on my um, screen after I trace. So then I get my trace settings. I'm gonna click on next. And for all different designs, since they are created differently, um, you may notice differences in how Leonardo Design Studio actually traces. I always just use the defaults first. That's just my personal preference. Use the defaults first, see how it's going to look, and I can always start over. So I'm gonna click next, I'm gonna finish. And what you'll see here is that, again, those PNG files, they don't necessarily open at the correct size. That could change or should change in a future update, but we can work with this. So I'm gonna come up here, I have my print and cut job selected, and I'm going to choose the page marks so that it expands my page out, my marks to my maximum size. And then I can just increase this. And then place it in here. Now, when you have text up here, um, I'd recommend not having that text um, next to your registration mark or overlapping your registration mark, especially if it's black, because that could interfere with your reading of your marks and your accuracy. So I have already traced it when it came in. So if I came up here to send design, I'm going to click send. And you can see here, I have my printable artwork and I have my cutting contours. So right now that is set up as my kiss cut. So if I come back here to this setting, select those planner stickers and I'm going to come down here to the properties and I want to make sure that that is set as the cut tool because that is what our kiss cut settings are for and then if I wanted to draw a die cut around certain sections of this now your shapes that you draw to make your um, die cut would be dependent on what your sticker file looks like so in this case, what I could do is I could draw a box around the top here for it to die cut. And you may need to zoom in depending on how the file was created and how close those stickers are to each other. So I'm going to then select stroke so that I can see through it. And I'm gonna come in and zoom in just a little bit more. So you're going to have to play around with the size of your box to be able to add more. And again, this is just file dependent. So this box is selected that I just drew and I wanna come over here to my setting and I wanna change that to a full cut. So then that is going to show as a full cut, my die cut setting when I go to send this to the Juliet or Romeo. Now what I can do is I can, again, I could use Control C, Control V and I could copy and paste that so then I keep the same die cut settings and I can change my box. So again, you have a lot of control in here in how you're working with this and it's really just going to be dependent on the file that you are working with. So you can see over here, since I copied and pasted that, it kept that same setting for my die cut. You can double check that here in the layers panel if you like, if you're a layers person. So I have the blue dot here shows as my full cut, 
whatever is selected on the screen is going to be what is selected in your layers panel. So you can check that. So here it shows cut tool. So I selected the sticker portion of it and it is going to be the kiss cut setting. And what I might suggest to Caesar is changing the colors of those dots so you actually know that they are a different setting from each other for that layers panel. That would be easier. So what I'm gonna do, so you might see that come up in a future update. Keep your eyes on that. And anything that is updated from this version that I'm currently working with, I will put those in the description notes of this video below. So make sure to check that out. Also make sure to like and subscribe if you want to be notified of future content that I put out. Um, Caesar, Juliet, and Romeo and Leonardo Design Studio are all new for all of us. So I love learning new things in this. And then I would just continue, that was just a side note, but I would just continue down the page and add that die cut box around what you want to be completely cut out. So it really just depends on your file, on how it's set up. If you're using somebody else's files, then you may find you need to use some additional tools to make it do what you want it to do, but you definitely can. I hope those tips have helped in learning how to set up a kiss cut setting versus a die cut setting in the Leonardo Design Studio software. Make sure to check the description below. I will link these. I will also link a couple other sticker files that I tested and that I worked with. They're the free ones at Design Bundles, so you can grab those to test with. A perfect chance to test without using any um, spending money on files that you don't know how they're gonna work. Again, each file can open and trace differently. Um, it can, as you saw with my SVG demonstration, um, those files were, it was too close. The, it was just created too close, but I could still work with it. So a lot of what I do when I'm learning is I just push buttons and I do ask questions. So, um, you know, I have that resource as well, but then it allows me to learn more and to be able to bring you these videos. So make sure to comment below if you have any questions and thank you for joining me. I hope you have a great day.